Hello and welcome to my channel. I am really excited about today's video uh, because I'm going to be sharing with you all of my tips on how to BS uh, paper. Um, and, you know, keep in mind, I am a English teacher and so I would, you know, pay attention. So before we get into my little tips and tricks on BSing a English paper, make sure to subscribe to this channel um, so you don't miss any of my English language arts content. So one of the best things that I was ever told was that, and I was told this by my older sister in fact, who is an academic genius. But one of the best things she ever told me was, it's not what you know, it's how you present it. And that's to say, it doesn't matter if you didn't read the book, for example, or if you really haven't done that much research on, you know, the topic you're going to be arg arguing about um, in your paper. As long as you present it well, you're going to be fine. Now, I do want to say, I don't think that you should not ever put in the work, but I have totally been a student myself and I know what it's like. Sometimes you have just so much to do um, and you know, you just didn't get around to doing things in the timely manner that you should have been. So this is going to teach you how to do a paper. Um, that maybe you didn't read the book for, or you didn't research enough, or you're just barely getting started on the night before. Um, again, something I've done. So, my first tip, number one, is know your non-negotiables. Uh, and for me, what that means as an English teacher, one of the first things I notice when I you know, open up a document to read it or look at a paper a student has submitted is I notice the format. So format is definitely a non-negotiable. Um, I, being an English teacher, I pay closest attention to MLA format. Um, I do have a video on just like super basic MLA formatting, but know those basics. Um, know what what your teacher is going to be expecting to see the second they open or look at your paper. Um, you know, if, if their trained eye, because we look at so many papers, our eye is trained to like notice the text size, immediately notice um, if the title is formatted correctly. Our, our eye is going to notice those things off the bat and if even those aren't done correctly, that automatically is just gonna like, all right, they obviously didn't put time into this. But if you have your format pristine, then as, as an English teacher, when I first look at that, I think like, oh, thank you. They, like, they know what they're doing, they're on top of it, uh, they've got it down. So definitely know your format. If your teacher wants it in APA, no APA. Um, if they want an MLA format, no MLA format. And so many um, writing programs these days, they just even already have like a format ready for you. You just need to open up that specific document and put your information in. So format is one of the non-negotiables. Um, second one, is like let's say you are writing a paper about a book that you should have read at least know your characters okay um know your characters their names how to spell their names and even just like the most basic description of them and i'm not saying like even physical appearance wise just like what their role is um and know the most basic plot points Okay, if, if you don't have time to look at your characters' names and the plot, then 
you know, you might have bigger problems on your hand. Um, but yeah, I, I one time had a student turn in a paper about uh, the book 1984 and their book report was about how um, this guy wasn't getting along with his older brother, which if you know anything about the book 1984, you know, I guess, I guess you could argue in like a metaphorical sense, yeah, but, but yeah, they did not pass on that paper. <laughs> um, so that's tip number one, know your non-negotiables. For a lot of people, that should be formatting and just like the most basic rudimentary knowledge of whatever your topic is, whether it's a book or um, let's say you're writing an argument paper, you know, know at least one professional's name in whatever field you're going to be arguing about. You know, if you're writing a paper up about physics, like, yeah, know Albert Einstein's name, but maybe also know, like, who Planck is or, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I don't know. So that's that. Um, number two is define, define, define. This means that, okay, let's say that you're assigned a five page paper and you've written everything you can and you have like a total of two pages. So what you can do, one of the ways to kind of bulk up your paper without just writing complete, complete BS, you know, this is a video about how to BS your paper, but how to actually make it come across well is to define. Um, and so, for example, uh, let's say that you throw in a quote from someone and they they bring up totalitarianism well that's a big word so what you can do is you know you have that quote in a paragraph and then and never end a paragraph by the way with someone else's words always begin and end with your own thoughts but anyway so you have that make the whole next paragraph explaining what totalitarianism is and you can do that with almost anything throughout your paper, you know, still kind of tie it back to whatever the main point is, but explain what that big word means. Um, act like you are the expert on this topic. And one of the best ways to do that is to define um, some of the bigger vocabulary, some of the um, more specific jargon that might come up throughout that paper. So definitely define. Um, as much as you can if you are struggling to get a required word count or a required page count. And there's something else I wanted to add with that. Oh, well, like, and even with characters, um, you know, if you're doing a book report or writing an analytical paper about a book, then even like mentioning one of the characters and then like giving, taking a brief moment to kind of explain their background and how they tie into this, you know, theme of the novel. Do that. Um, I think sometimes one of the things we can kind of get caught up on when we are writing something, and not only if we do know a lot about it, but if we don't know a lot about it, but we know that we should know a lot about it, we think that the reader, the audience, most often our teacher already knows everything there is to know about it. Which is probably true because your teacher is the one that assigned you to read the book or whatever it may be. But as a teacher, I know that my student isn't the expert on this. So if they are showing that they can explain, um, you know, how a character fits into this theme, even if you know, you just read a basic little bio about that character on 
you know, schmoop.com or Sparknotes. But if you're able to talk about this character and tie them back into um, the theme in some, even some small way, that's still telling my brain like, oh, like they know the story well enough to do that. Um, even if you didn't, you know, there's no way I can know that. Again, it's not what you know, it's how you present it. If you're presenting it well, I, I don't know that you didn't read the book. So there's that. Define, define, define. That's definitely my number one tip as far as like bolstering word count. Um, and then my third trick for BSing your paper is relate whatever it is you're talking about to something you do know about. Um, I have no shame in admitting that I did this all the time in my English classes. Uh, Okay, maybe not all the time. I do love English. I did not BS my way through English, but I became so good at it that when I needed to, I could. So anyway, um, in one of my classes, we were assigned to read Wuthering Heights, and I started it. I did. But when you are majoring in English, you have a heck ton of books to read. Um, at one time, and also maybe you've got a job, and you know there's a whole venn diagram of like sleep social and like actually succeeding in academics and you got you can only choose two but anyway getting off topic here um so we were told to read weathering heights i started it i was n not uh keeping up with it but what i would do in class is i would kind of just like sit back for a second, pay attention to what people were saying about the book. And I did have like a somewhat basic understanding of Wuthering Heights. But then whatever people would say about it, in my head I'd be like, okay, well I can connect that to this in Lord of the Rings, or I can connect that to this in Harry Potter, or this in Jane Eyre, or this in Pride and Prejudice, which are all things I have read, things I do know very well. Um, and so, you know, if you hear, you know, what I would do is I would hear someone say something about one of the characters in Wuthering Heights, and then I would be like, oh, well, Heathcliff, he, he kind of reminded me of this other character for this reason. And then we could go off on this whole other discussion, and the professor thought it was great, and other kids related to it, too. You can do that in a paper, is what I'm getting at. Um, so... Find something you do know, hopefully something literary. Maybe don't reference like the movie version of something, but if you can relate something you're talking about in the paper, especially in a book report, to another literary source that you are familiar with, obviously don't spend the whole paper doing that, but you could spend a couple of paragraphs and hey, it looks like you know what you're talking about. So, those are my three somewhat quick tips on how to BS an English paper, and hopefully these come in helpful to you. Um, if they do, or whether they do or not, you're obviously still watching, so make sure to subscribe to this channel. Um, leave a comment, let me know if any of these have worked for you in the past, or if you're going to try any of these and make sure to come back for more English language arts content from yours truly. Okay, I hope you have a great day. Uh, don't procrastinate whatever it is you should be working on right now, and I'll see you around.